Ford has given up on building batteries itself with its joint venture partner, SK On, at the loss of $10 billion. It's willing to lose $10 billion because it believes that licensing technology from China is a better decision. I mean, this is a, actually a pretty wild thing that Ford have just done. Ford are essentially saying it's going to make more than $10 billion, right, in profit to pay back that enormous loss or something like that anyway. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. And if you can become a YouTube member, that would be awesome because it would help support the channel and help me continue to bring you this kind of content. Ford isn't just scaling back on electric cars, which it loses about 35,000 US dollars on everyone it sells. It's rethinking how it handles batteries altogether. This month, Ford scrapped not one, but two major EV battery plants, an $11.4 billion joint venture with South Korea's SK On and a $6.5 billion supply agreement with LG Energy Solution. In total, it's losing about $10 billion on what, they, what it's already built. So what Ford is actually doing is stopping, it's tap, putting the brakes on its EV ambitions for the time being, and it's putting, well, investing all in on a different type of battery. The kind of battery that's pretty good for power grids and pretty good for the uh, investment, the only investment I personally currently have and that is in a phosphate factory, not phosphate mine, I should say, in Canada. So guys, I'll put a link in the description below to my interview with the CEO of that phosphate mine. And the reason I've invested in that is just because of, of what Ford's doing, of what General Motors is doing, of what Volkswagen Group are doing, of what Tesla are doing in North America, where that phosphate will come from and supply those, supply those companies. Well, that's the goal anyway. So the company signed a licensing deal in 2023, Ford did, with CATL, which are the biggest battery company in the world, but they're from China, of course. The licensing deal was pretty much the same deal that I think Tesla and, and, and General Motors have signed. It's for lithium ion phosphate batteries. The original plan was to manufacture EV batteries using CATL's chemistry, bringing production in-house. Really, the truth is, the idea is CATL, they come, they get their staff, they send, their, they send all the production equipment over to Ford in the US. They send their staff over, their staff set it all up to show Ford how to build these batteries. And then, then Ford employees take over. But that plan has actually kind of changed. Now, instead of funneling CATL's lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry into cars, Ford will now use these batteries these large, well, actually use these batteries in large format for energy storage. And that's for home energy storage, kind of like Tesla's Powerwalls, but also for very large batteries, like mega pack batteries. These units built at scale are intended for utilities and grid operators and homeowners. Given the fact that we already had a license to build that technology in the United States, you couple that with our manufacturing experience over a century of high scale manufacturing it just made a lot of sense as a natural adjacency for us, said Ford's Vice President of Technology Platform Programs and EV Systems, Lisa Drake. Now, is Ford's experience at high-scale manufacturing for over a century making cars relevant to making megapack batteries and home power, home power batteries? Uh, a little bit, but not as much as it sounds. It's a very different product. Ford has had to walk through a political minefield to bring its deal with CATL to life. Virginia's governor rejected Ford's plans to build a battery plant there using CHL technology due to its Chinese links, which I think is absolutely insane. The governor of Virginia, in my opinion, if, if you reject this plan, you're basically saying no to bringing jobs to the United States. Because what's the alternative? I mean, really, what's the alternative? It's, it's mental. Ford's only going to be paying a few percent in terms of royalties to CATL. And the rest is going to Ford. The rest is going to the United States. The rest is going to workers in, in North America. So if you're dumb enough to reject that, you shouldn't be a governor of any state. That's what I think anyway. Now, guys, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Ford is now building its plant in Michigan, and it expects it to open next year. As the Trump administration pushes to reduce America's reliance on Chinese products, Ford believes its approach is better than continuing to import Chinese-made batteries that have already become more common in the US energy sector, which is what Tesla does, right? Tesla imports 
re- literally billions of dollars worth of these same batteries that Ford is going to manufacture in the United States. Now, obviously, Tesla are going to do the same thing as Ford. So this story you're re- hearing here about Ford is going to apply similarly to Tesla. So what's the case for building in North America? Well, one, you avoid the Trump tariffs. Given the ongoing needs of US energy producers, it seems like a no-brainer to support efforts to produce batteries in America instead of importing more of them from China, said Ford. Now, that's just pandering to the Trump administration. Obviously, the truth is Ford was forced to do this. If it wasn't forced to do this, it would continue doing what it was doing before, which is importing lithium-ion phosphate batteries from China, which it does. It sells those in the Ford Mustang Mach-E right now, the imported batteries. And it would be easier for Ford to continue importing than building its own factory and spending all these massive sums of money. But, of course, the Trump administration putting tariffs on has really encouraged Ford to do this. The car maker has also revealed that it spoke with potential customers to see if there was demand for it to sell energy storage cells to them. It received resounding affirmation. Not only are LFP battery cells great for EVs, but they're also well suited for energy storage, hence why Ford's move makes sense. Ford ultimately wants to develop its own low-cost batteries, taking lessons from its licensing agreement with CATL. According to Drake, it would have taken Ford a decade to catch up and have competitive LFP technology of its own if it hadn't joined forces with the Chinese firm. A decade. Can they catch up in a decade? Of course not. That is a ridiculous comment. I mean, Ford making that comment is like a, it feels like a primary school kid saying something. It's just, Ford is never going to catch up. How the hell would Ford catch up? Now, if they're saying for Ford in, 10, in 2035 can catch up with CATL, what they're producing in 2025, maybe. But it's a, the goalposts are moving. That's the whole point here. The goalposts continue to move. So as the battery chemistry improves, um, you know, we're going to see higher energy density. And we are. I mean, look at the current energy density of the LFP batteries that Ford are going to be using from CATL. There, it's about 200 watt hours per kilogram which is quite high for LFP. So that's really how things are going in the United States right now. It's not just Ford, it's also Tesla. I mean, Volkswagen, I mentioned them before, they are using, they've actually got their own battery factory already that no one really talks about. Goshan High Tech have built that factory. That's a Chinese company, by the way. And that produces lithium-ion phosphate battery cells right now for the Volkswagen group. But the Volkswagen, they actually own I believe, about, I believe about 35% of Goshan High Tech. And that's they own that's the Chinese company. They actually own 35% of that entire company. So, you know, right now Volkswagen have a bit of a head start in that respect, but I think this is a good move from Ford. It is interesting though that they haven't decided on any kind of licensing agreement for sodium ion batteries. The Naxtra battery from CATL is incredibly good. So it'll be it'll be very I'm very curious to see what happens with that battery and if companies try to license that technology. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye bye, guys. If you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below, and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, Um, nothing, not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.